Good morning. Good morning. Sorry you're a little bit off schedule or are we on schedule or the real schedule with the refreshments? I don't know. So, Merry Christmas to all of you. Merry Christmas. And it feels wonderfully warm in here. Shall we begin with hymn number 199? Can you stand and sing Hark the Herald Angels Sing?
there uh, won't be any prayer meeting this week. Uh, January 1st is a New Year's service with communion. Uh, we won't be having any services uh, January 1st in the evening. Uh, January 10th is the Mount Bear uh, Bible study at 7 p.m. and that will be in the back room of the church. January 16th uh, is a council dinner and meeting at the Alsh Elders Must starting at 6 p.m. So January 16th at 6 p.m. We didn't ask you, but is that all right? Yes, I think so. <laughs> I haven't looked at my calendar yet, but I think so. Um, and uh, possible dates for a uh, trip to the Museum of the Bible. If anybody's interested in going uh, to the Museum of the Bible, uh, January 14th or the 28th. Uh, February 11th. Um, check those dates and let Terry know if you're interested in going on a trip down to the Museum of the Bible. Any other announcements? I plan a possible snow day, so I can just like the possible Yeah, and there could, could be a snow day in there somewhere if we pick a date, so, uh, so we'll have a few different dates to work with. Good idea. Any other announcements?
These seemed a long time in coming to the people of Israel. Though for centuries they had been plagued with wars and unrest, still they held fast to the promise of a Messiah, one who would restore all things. And when he came, very few noticed, for he was born in a stable to some ordinary travelers who had come to David's city because of the census. But his birth took place just as the prophet Micah had predicted in Bethlehem. Oh boy, here comes Mr. Know-It-All. How 
what's going on here, guys? This. Click on this. Nothing going out here. See any animals yet? That's a whole lot of sheep. There sure is a lot of stars out tonight. That might be the brightest one I've ever seen. You're right. It probably is. The reason why I didn't come was because Father took me to worship at the synagogue. Well, aren't you special? Yes, I am, really. But it was really interesting. The rabbis kept talking about the Savior Messiah will keep, will come down, will come down to earth to save us from the Romans. He must be very powerful. The so the Romans have a lot of soldiers. A baby, a baby can't save anyone from from any save anyone, especially from the Romans. So when's it gonna come? Soon, I hope. The rabbis didn't say, but it must be coming soon because they kept calling the Savior the Messiah. It's hard to believe anyone cares about us and wants to save us. Well, I believe. I do too. I'd be happy if someone could save me from these dumb sheep. Oh, Joe, you're always complaining. Look at the time. It's getting late. We should get some rest while it's all nice and peaceful. Besides, Uncle Amos is watching over the sheep. Don't be afraid. I got wonderful news to share with you. Who are you? I'm the angel. I came with the message from God. He sent in a savior, the Messiah. The Messiah. Oh, great news. Right now, tonight, he has come and have a baby. A baby? A baby can't save anyone, especially from the Romans. Yes, you should call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. And go and see for yourself. Did you hear that? That was the best that? news ever. An angel, music, maybe I'm dreaming. We can't all be dreaming. Let's go to Bethlehem to see the Christ Jesus. Let's go. God has heard the prayers of his people. But we're just shepherds. What can we do? We can go spread the news that the Christ Jesus is born.
was the Tower of Babel. When they said, let us build a tower, reach to heaven. Let us not be scattered. So today, we have to decide which let us are we going to follow. The Bible or man? So they said, let us go into the, even the moon and see this thing which has come to pass, which is more than known unto us. The response was, let us go and find out what's going on. One of my favorite verses, Psalm 122, 1. I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. I was glad when they said, let's go to Trinsenberg Bible Church. I hope no one this morning said, do we have to go? And look looking forward to go. So there's an encouragement here when you know the Lord, you know God's people, you want to be together. So there's a lot of let us. In the book of Hebrews, 13 times, there's a let us. All those are encouraged. Let us exhort one another. Let us encourage one another. Let us not faint. So there's a lot of let us in the Bible, a lot of encouragement, and we're here to encourage you. Let us go to Bethlehem, nearby. What the shepherds had to do was not a long journey. They didn't have to go through O'Hare. <laughs> Airports to get here. I've been through O'Hare a couple times. Uh, usually Monday after Thanksgiving, I never knew why. We had a conference of always the Monday after Thanksgiving. I never knew why O'Hare was so busy in travel. But it's nearby. The Bible tells us, Acts 17, 27, God is not far from every one of us. So today we want to make salvation very available. You don't need a credit score. You don't need to try it out. It is so close, the Bible movement says, it's in your mouth. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, you can be saved. I'm glad that I accepted Christ. Well, before it got complicated, because some theologians get so complicated about salvation. The Bible tells us we're all sinners. Sin carries a death penalty. Christ died for us. We receive him. He died. He was buried. He arose. We accept what he did. We receive him. We're saved. When Reverend Sullivan, son of the man over his name over here, led me to the Lord. He asked me questions. I knew the answers. Are you a sinner? Yeah. Sin carry penalty? Yes. You're going to not go to heaven if you don't know Jesus? Yes. You want to receive Jesus? Yes. But pray it out? Yes. It was done. So the reality, when you accept Christ as your Savior, what a great gift you can do today is to receive Christ as your Savior. So there's an encouragement to do the right things. So many encouragements in the world that are wrong. This is a good one. But they want to get the evidence. Let us go into even the Bethlehem and see. The word see in it. Original language has the idea, get full knowledge, understand, comprehend, recognize without a doubt. Now, to those of us who know the Lord, we have the assurance we're saved and going to heaven. To a lot of people, that is braggadocious. Someone, yes. We're bragging upon Jesus. We're bragging about that baby that grew up, the sign of the Savior. So we can know that we're going to heaven. We can know that our sins are forgiven. I remember the night I accepted Christ. I've been in church all my life. There was no facts that needed to be changed. But I still remember how I felt going home that evening compared to how I came in. It was like, yes, this is real. Have you ever had that in your life? When you accept Christ, you know it's real, not something the preacher talks about. You know in your heart. We want to see it. 1 John 5.13 says, These things were written that you may know that you have eternal life. So when you look in the Bible, God wants us to know that we're saved. There's so many things about us so uncertain. We don't know what's going to happen. What do we even know what's going to happen in the House of Representatives on January 3? The Lord had the election. There are a lot of things. We don't even know the weather all the time. Uh, you know, my radar, it shows snowflakes, but the sky is clear. So I think somebody needs to get that. You've got to usually have clouds when you have snow. But you can know you're saved and 
Come on, come on. Job 13, uh, 19 25 says, Job said, I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand on the earth in the latter day. What I like about that context, when Job said that, he wasn't in a church service, was he? Where, where was Job when he said that? He was on an ash heap with blood all over his body and Job's comforters? Call him a hypocrite, a sinner, and a liar. I've always said, if you think I'm one of the three, please don't come to comfort me. <laughs> but people were putting him down and Satan was accusing Job falsely. And what did Job say? I know my Redeemer lives. We don't know what the future may hold, but we know who holds the future. So there's the evidence. Now, verse 16 then, says they came with haste. How long are we going to wait around? How long are we going to put it off? <clears throat> came with hopes, without uh, haste, without any doubt in his mind. In Luke 19, we have the story about Zacchaeus, uh, one of the former elders of the church in Detroit we called last week. Uh, he wanted to talk about a short-statured IRS agent. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, Zacchaeus the tax collector. So, okay, we're well, going <laughs> He's a short guy who worked for the IRS. <laughs> and the only way you can see Jesus, we know two things. He's a tax collector, he can climb trees. So he climbed up in that tree. It's like, Zacchaeus, a sycamore tree. Jesus said, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down. What's the next verse say? Zacchaeus made haste and come down. I've always felt in my life when God speaks to me, he expects an instant action. I grew up on a farm like that. Raise mature like that. When you give him command, do it. Sometimes it maybe it's not convenient for you. But when they <coughs> saw this, they made haste. And look what it says. They made haste and found. It's amazing when you make a decision, what you discover. Many people have the Bible in their hand, but they, they've never discovered what it can do for you. Well, make a decision. Study the Word. It's been amazing to be over my life what I did. I can't hardly explain it. God made heaven and earth without our advice. But oftentimes He doesn't move until we ask Him to move. Now God can wipe us all out in one moment. And I found in my life, when I get serious with the Lord, He gets serious with me. When I dedicated my life to the Lord, things changed. I mean, my academic grade level changed from high school to college. And it was much more difficult in college. What was the difference? I was serious. High school, get out. Don't get hurt. <laughs> college, get prepared to serve the Lord. What a difference it is when we serve the Lord, we make a decision, discovery. The word find means they found all the details that was told them. I can just imagine those shepherds going in there and they're checking it off. Baby, swatted clothes, manger, Mary, Joseph, Lamb of God. They're checking everything off. You know, God knows the mind is checking up on it because God is always accurate in all details. Isaiah 55 says, Seek ye, Lord, while he may be found. Call you upon him while he is near. <clears throat> I've had the great privilege as a pastor to lead many people to the Lord. Some of them on their deathbed. A few absolutely refused my visit on their deathbed. Remember one guy, I was witnessing him, you could tell him he, was not, he hadn't been that long to live. And he finally said to me, Preacher, get out of my room or I'll call security. My heart, my heart dropped. I mean, he, he's not sure he rejected me. So I went out in the hallway and just stood there and prayed a little bit about it. What else am I going to do? I didn't want the security guard to order me out. Can you imagine dying and saying, I don't want the Lord? God is near. And God is speaking. We respond to it. Bible tells us, ask, it shall be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Now, when I was growing up, 
one of the game, games we always loved was hide and seek. Did you folks ever play hide and seek? I really feel sorry for my children, my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren. They play hide and seek in a house. We played hide and seek in a farm. It's a whole different. <laughs> when you got a barn and a silo and a hog pen and a chicken house and the trees, it's a lot different. And I was able to hide when they wouldn't find me. But God's not that way. Seek the Lord. He wants to be found. He wants to accept us into his family. Not it shall be open to you. Deuteronomy 4.29 says, If you seek the Lord your God, you will find him if you seek him with all your heart and soul. <clears throat> when I got saved, it was not a negotiation. The difference between being saved and being negotiating, I accepted what God said. Negotiate. What do we have to negotiate? God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He wants your cow. God owns all the treasures on earth. He wants your bank account. What do we have left to offer the Lord except to receive Him as our Savior? And He accepts us and we're born again. So then we go to verse 17. They saw the baby. They found Mary, Joseph, the babe lying in it, just as it is. Now, the third point of declaration. When you know the Lord, you're going to want to talk about it. Look at verse 17. And when they had seen it, rest your mind, this is it. They made known. <clears throat> that word, made known, it means they gave all details. I think, from then on, these guys were always talking about it. Talking about a baby being born. I'm going to do a little, just a little survey round through here. Uh, do you parents ever talk about your children's birth on their birthday? Yes. Every birthday you're going to hear how it was when you were born. <laughs> and you do it to your kids? We do it to our Actually, me. Okay, you. <laughs> My daughter was 10 pounds. See, there we got an illustration. I every time. <laughs> okay. I thought I thought I, I, I was baiting and she bit. <laughs> That's what I wanted. You talk about that baby's birth every birthday. Here they are. And some of you that are adults, the same thing. Now her daughter, Beth, was born in Calvary County during the blizzard of 66. And when we would talk about that, we'd say, Beth was born in the blizzard of 66. After I would explain the birth, the birth process for my wife and the baby and so forth. Somebody else would always remember, boy, I remember that was the first snowflake that we saw. Jackie began to get labor pains. As the pains came up, the snowflakes came down, labor pains came up, and I'm not a hero. I'm not going to get to the hospital. Um, none of us have a baby by the side of the road. I'm not going to go for that. And so it snowed eight inches that evening with about 20 mile an hour wind. And uh, I, before I could get out of the driveway to get back to the hospital, Beth arrived. Then we had 22 inches of snow with a 40 mile an hour wind, and it shut down everything. So Beth's birthday is in January, and we repeat that story every time. She knows you down pat as we are back here from Barb. Then our son Steve was born. I had a pastor's meeting north of Harrisburg, we lived in D.C., and I had a pastor's meeting that particular day. I checked Jackie, non-medical, at 5 a.m., nothing was moving. So I went to the pastor's conference, stayed through dinner, but thought maybe I should skip the evening service just in case. Well, not just in case. I get home, my wife was not there, checked with my folks, found out my father-in-law took her to the hospital, and uh, Steve was on the way. I did get there just before he was born. And I tell him, I'm still trying to catch up with that guy. <laughs> so we have this story. But they would tell this story all over the place because it's a great story about the birth of Christ. They spread it all over the area. When people know the Lord, they want to talk about it. 
In John 1, 21, Andrew told Peter, we have found the Messiah, interpret the Christ. Philip says to Nathaniel, we have found him of whom Moses and the prophets have wrote, Jesus of Nazareth. When I talk to people, I, I try to drop hints without hammering people, just make expressions. For instance, the other day, uh, I was involved in a race across America. Our cemetery is 84. So my wife went out and put flags and all the grace so that people know where they're going. So we were there, and I had part of the program, prayer. And so after it's over, um, I was getting ready to lay those things. A fellow came to me and said, and I get this occasion, how's the world treating you? I have one standard answer. The world is not treating me good. But the Lord sure is treating me good. And I'll wait for a response. The guy's response was, how old are you? 84. Oh, I'm 82. So, but other times, people will say, yes. I mean, I have my cap that says Mark's Ministries. I mean, Lowe's. And he says, what is Mark's Ministry? I said, my wife and I are in ministry, serving the Lord. She said, you must preach the gospel. I said, you must know the Lord. Yes. So why is it, and, and, and check out a load, within, within 20 seconds, we both know we're Christians, and this fellow, I'm not sure. So when you know the Lord, you want to talk about the Lord. You want to tell people about the Lord. If I would ask you, do you have children? Do you have grandchildren? Some of you already are reaching for your smartphone. I'm not going to go further. You want to talk about that? But, okay. A good, good response is okay. But you talk to people, and their answer is, I want something private. I don't talk about that, my religion. Well, I don't talk about religion either, but I talk about Jesus. There's a difference. These people may know it. Everyone in the area knew about Jesus being born because they talked about it. So then we have reaction. How do people respond when you tell them? <coughs> you can tell people today about the wonderful service here. And they might say, uh-huh. Man, we, we didn't have an uh-huh uh -huh service. We had an uh-huh service. But if you don't know the Lord, you don't understand. It's part of the family. So in verse 18, And all they that heard wondered, and those things which were told them by the shepherds. The word wonder means gazed in astonishment. <coughs> they were amazed. One thing that I was finding about it, that you don't see in history, but theologians tell us, that shepherds' testimony was not considered valid. A lot of people <coughs> look at shepherds in the Bible like we do gypsies today. Nothing wrong with gypsies, but people have a uh, stereotype about them. So they, when they were saying shepherds, uh, you know, you ever witness the people they want to know, well, where did you go to school? Well, what degrees do you have? I know that right now if I would uh, recontact uh, McDonald, McDaniel College and ask that we could have a session so that I could present to the faculty what I did today, what do you think the college would do? Well, where did you go to school? Washington Bible College at Capital Bible Seminary. Can you see the eyes rolling? <laughs> you ever witness the people that roll their eyes? When people roll their eyes, you know their hearts are not right with the Lord. But I enjoy hearing testimonies of people that know the Lord. Another time this word is used, that's in Luke 4.22. They all wondered at the gracious words out of the mouth of Jesus. Same Greek word. When they told about his birth, there was this wonder. When Jesus talked, they wondered. And it's interesting. They said, is not this Joseph's son? How could a guy from Nazareth know all these things? Well, did you hear what the shepherd said? Did you hear what the wise men? And that's a later story that we can talk about at some other time. So there's reservations today. My wife and I, between Claremont and here, we passed a number of churches. Some of them didn't have a service this morning. 
that we discussed. If you don't know the truth about Christ, there's no need to go. If you're not going to tell the truth, why to say anything? So thank the Lord that we have church. And there are other churches. There were some churches. Not all of them were closed. But it's a time of serving the Lord in the world. That's just a Christmas. In fact, I guess now you, kids don't get Christmas break. They get a winter Christmas <coughs> break. I got it. When I went to school, we had a Christmas break and Easter break. Now it's a winter break, spring break. But Jesus is still the same. So the world is wondering, what's all this about? It? If you knew my Jesus, you'd notice all the great marvel about him. Now verse 19. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. That word pondered, she kept thinking over and over. And maybe you mothers, you remember birth of the child. Oh, Jack, we'll never forget snowstorms. <laughs> with Beth, when we try to get the hospital with Steve. And so Mary is pondering over. She's the only one that heard the announcement of the virgin birth. Jo Joseph was told, but Mary heard it herself. She said, thinking, going to call his name Jesus. He shall save his people from their sins. He's going to be a savior. Hmm. He's being born before <coughs> lambs are born. Uh, in the Passover, what happened to the lamb? Something was sacrificed. Whether she knew all these things, Mother Mary, did you know? We had a song like that. So she wondered about this. And she says she pondered. It means she throws things together. She confirmed to herself, what might this be? Even when we have children today, and young children. Okay, what's the world going to be like in 20 years? I don't know what the world will be like in 20 years. I know what the promise of God will be like in 20 years. And since I was born in 1938, we've had several war wars, but we're still able to drive our cars freely to church today. So we don't know what the future holds, but we know God holds the future. Then in Luke 2.51, at the dedication of uh, Jesus, it says, Mary kept all these things in her heart, putting those things together. And so, remembrance by Mary. But then we go to the shepherds, back again in verse 20. In verse 17, they told everybody. Now it says, the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they'd heard and seen as it was told them uh, unto them. Glory. They ascribe all praise to the Lord. When I see what God is doing, the older I get, I think, the more grateful I am to the Lord. Right now, I mean, that process, I started yesterday, where I'm reviewing this year the things I accomplished, things I didn't, uh, things I enjoyed, coming to the church, going to the farm show, various things, being with the family, things that didn't quite enjoy so much. And then I've got a section down here, answers to prayer and things God did without me praying. Did you know that I went to a doctor's appointment last year and when I signed out, I dropped my hearing aid and didn't even know it. I'm sitting in my car and God goes up and just me said, is like this belong to you? Now, I didn't pray for my hearing aid. I didn't even know I lost it. So I'm recording all those things and put them in my folder so that when Satan comes along and says, God doesn't do anything for you, I say, go look in my folder. <laughs> I'm keeping a record of God, what God does. You know why? Because God keeps a perfect record. So already, now I forgot about that until I well, saw that in my diary. So I'm writing down things that God has done for us. Because you may think, well, it's just a small church. Look at what the world the world's a mess. Yeah, but God is great. So they're magnifying the Lord. First Corinthians 10 31 says, When you eat or drink or whatever you do, you walk for the glory of God. So we're here to honor Him. And then the word praise. This word is used only of God. There's only things we can say. Only God could do that. This word occurs a couple of times. One of them in Acts 3. Isn't it? The, the Greek language has such a 
a color to it. There was a, a, a man that was lame, <coughs> walked with a limp, walked with a crutch all his life. And Peter and the disciples healed him. What the, the Bible would say, he gave one great big leap and wouldn't stop walking. I mean, if you've been a cripple all your life, and now you're going to walk, what do you do? Walk, walk, walk. Tell the guy, sit down. You can't sit down. He's so happy. It says he leaped, and he kept on leaping and praising God. He would probably show his, look what God did, show his legs. And the world looks at it and brags. Now, in our church here, when we give a testimony, it's not bragging, is it, about us? Well, I did this, I did it. We're bragging about the Lord. And the other world's going, no. But if you knew how great God is, how great the Lord is, in each of our lives, you would do the same. A closing verse, the last verse in the book of Luke. When we leave the book of Luke, we're only in chapter 2. We go to chapter 24. Jesus came, ministered, healed, went to Calvary, died for our sins, was buried, he arose, he was with the people for 40 days. He sent it to heaven. The last verse of the book of Luke says, And they were continually in the temple, praising and blessing God. Amen. May our life be an example. When people look at us, they think, they, they have a great God. They have a good God. I like to have that God, too. I'm pray, praying that when people see us, they want to see Jesus also. Let's bow down and pray. Father, we thank for your word. Thank for these shepherds that kept talking about Jesus. And we want to keep talking about Jesus. Thank you for the opportunity today for music and program and the word of God. May we live for your glory and keep praising you as long as we live. We pray in Christ's name. Amen.
know that you are with us. You are always with us. And we pray, Lord, that we will enter this week and this coming year knowing that we are yours. We belong to you. That we are forever secure in your hands. We ask, Lord, that you would bless us, not because we are worthy or deserving, but because of your great name. And may we reflect you gloriously. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Merry Christmas.